still Caleb, <laughs> haven't changed, that I know of. I'm going to be talking about uh, the HA solution that we have in NFS Ganesha. Uh, and for some of us who don't know, I, the pronunciation is Gan Ganesha, not Ganesha. Um, so Lord Ganesha gets upset if you say his name wrong, I think. Maybe. There's some experts in the room, maybe. The what? <coughs> My ear is still. In. <laughs> oh, was that? No, I was just looking at the audience in general. Um, so this is going to be a medium level dive. I'm going to talk about some technical things, uh, not, but I'm not going to show you code or anything like that because that will put you to sleep. I'm almost certain. So um, it was important that I have this slide up with the right font for Indiana Jones. It's, the uh, choice of Temple of Doom versus the Temple of NFS Ganesha HA is not a reflection on the HA solution. Even though Temple of Doom was like the worst Indiana Jones movie of all time until Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came along. But uh, now I'm going to switch. Ah, no. Okay, so um, where's my notes? I need my notes. Notes. <coughs> notes. People who don't have tab. Okay, so for the for the sake of this talk, we're gonna. Everybody's talking. You're very disconcerting. Sorry, right? I'll, I'll step in. That's okay. We're gonna um, basically what I'm gonna do is describe a four-node cluster, but it could be any size node. Four is just a nice number. It fits on the slides. So what we've got here, what I'm showing here, is a four-node cluster. We've got pacemaker and core sync are running. Gluster D is running. I don't know how easy it is to read to read those, but we have Gluster D running, and we have a four-brick volume um, cluster FSD is running with the four, uh, and the brick is started. So that's that's kind of uh, the sort of the basic platform that we're, or that I'll be describing as we go through here. So, um, so when you, uh, once you've got this running and you want to start up Ganesha, we, in our current impl implementation, we've got uh, highly integrated with Gluster and Gluster D. So you can issue the command um, Gluster NFS Ganesha enable. And um, what this does is invokes uh, a script that we have, the Ganesha-HA uh, uh, bash script with the dash dash setup option. And so what this does, uh, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to really show you any code. The code is too, uh, too hard to understand. Um, but it, it does a few things as soon as you issue that command through Gluster. It invokes the Ganesha-HA script, which starts by uh, authenticating across the cluster, so across all four nodes with the pacemaker, it authenticates with all four nodes. It creates this cluster, and in this case, the cluster has a really clever name, my HA cluster, uh, and that gets distributed by Chorusync throughout the cluster. It starts the cluster, so that's a specific PCS command, that's a pacemaker command, that actually starts to instantiate all of the state and files that are needed. So it starts the cluster, and then one of the first things the cluster does is elect something called a domain controller. Basically all the participating members in the cluster start talking to each other and they vote to elect a domain controller. And in order for things to work, we actually need to wait for that election to succeed and, and for there to be a domain controller. Once that's running, then we can proceed and do some other things. Uh, some of the things that we do is our check and see if there are at least three nodes. If there's three nodes, then we, we have a basic simple quorum. If there's going to be less than three nodes, we need to disable the quorum feature in, in Pacemaker. And the other thing we do, uh, among other things, is we disable Stoneth. So we don't actually want to shoot ever shoot the other nodes. There's other things still running on there. We want to leave them alone, but we, but for the sake of, um, for the sake of our HA solution, 
uh, the cluster or the or the uh, the state is nodes are down or loads are, nodes are logically down, but we don't ever want to lose the whole node if if it's not really dead. Um, okay. Once once the, the cluster is basically up and running and has signaled that that uh, it's it's generally happy, pacemakers running, Corusync is distributing its files and keeping them in sync throughout the cluster. Then the script, the the Ganesh AHA script proceeds to create uh, a bunch of uh, or several uh, resource agents, or I might just refer to them as resources. So the, the resources that we have up here that you can see, we have a Ganesha Mon, and I'll explain what these are, what these are and what these do in a minute, but we have a Ganesha Mon resource agent, we have one called the Ganesha Grace, we have one called the Ganesha NFSD, and then the one that we're, that we're most interested in is that on each of these nodes, oh, there's a car hiding it, um, there's a virtual IP, I never saw that car before. Um, we create virtual IP resources, and the virtual IP resources are resource agents actually are responsible for instantiating the floating IPs that uh, start off one per node, and then, as you'll see here when I get to it in a, in a minute or two, they, act, they, they, can, they move around in the cluster as a result of different state changes. Uh, we also have a couple uh, port block resources, and yeah. So what they do, Ganesha Mon, so resource agents are by design intended to be very simple. They're supposed to like monitor one thing or change one state, monitor one state. Mostly we want them to be very simple. These are, these are actually, you could write these in any language, most of the ones that uh, that exist in the pace, as part of the pacemaker package and the ones that we write are actually just bash, bash scripts. They have uh, four or five methods in them. There's a start method, there's a monitor method, there's a stop method, and there's a couple others, and I'll expand on that uh, in a little <coughs> further on. Anyway, the Ganesha Mon, uh, as maybe the name hints, is monitoring the, the Ganesha, the NFS Ganesha daemon. So it, it, one of its uh, configuration parameters is something that says you should run every 15 seconds or, you, or the monitor routine, the monitor method should run every 15 seconds. And that monitor routine, uh, that monitor method just uh, looks, in the, in, looks for the PID file and then after <coughs> finding the PID file, maybe it finds the PID file or not, then it looks in PROC to see if that PROC PID file exists, and that's how it tests whether uh, the Ganesha NFSD is running or not. Ganesha Grace exists, um, and I'll be, uh, Ganesha Grace exists to send signals. We use, uh, Ganesha uses DBUS, and we have uh, three or four different DBUS signals that we, that we take <coughs> advantage of that are defined by the Ganesha package. Um, but in our HA, so some, some of those are outside the, the HA. Within the HA, the signal that we send when it's sent by this resource is a, is a signal that puts the Ganesha NFSD into grace. So maybe, maybe not all of you are familiar with, NF, what, with what NFS grace is. NFS grace is a state that says, um, something important is going on and clients shouldn't be doing I.O. So NFS, the daemon enters grace, sig uh, messages are sent over the NFS protocol to the NFS clients that say uh, the, the server is now in grace. Clients will do things like uh, replay their locks or, mic or in, in some other situations they might uh, uh, do other things, but um, what we're mostly interested in is replaying locks. So what that means is that, let's imagine for a second, this node went away, and the Ganesha NFSD, which I'm not, not even showing here yet, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. The Ganesha NFSD might be managing a number of locks for the clients that are talking to this, to this cluster, and uh, those clients will want to migrate their locks to, 
the new the new server that they're talking to.
is called, that's when they send that debus message that I was talking about earlier that puts that Ganesha demon into grace. So when it goes, and like as I explained earlier, when it goes into grace, then it notifies all the clients, and the clients can do things like replay their lock. So all the clients that were connected to this uh, to this cluster through this virtual life by mounting from this uh, floating IP, they can replay their locks and basically whatever server they're talking to now. Let's say this B well this VIP would have moved probably would have moved over here. So they're now talking to this Ganesha demon and they replay their locks and then as soon as they re they're, they're done replaying their locks and the Ganesha demon the default grace period is 90 seconds. That's a that's an NFS standard, but or that's the NFS uh, defined default value. Um, that is actually tunable. You can have shorter ones. Um, one of the some things about NFS Grace is that no I/O can go on. So you might you can mount a volume, but you can't you can't read files from it, or you can or you can't do uh, a read dir because underneath the covers a read dir is obviously just a, a read and um, at least right now, the way NFS Ganesha is implemented, that that's kind of the naive, it just blocks all I.O. Uh, in, in truth, the NFS protocol says the only I.O.s that should be blocked are on files that, that have, where a lock exists, maybe, or some other, some other uh, conditions. And uh, going forward, Ganesha should get better and be less, uh, have less uh, coarse-grained uh, blocking or blocking of the IOs. Caleb, okay, one yes. question regarding the, the MON um, resource agent. So you were mentioning that it listens, uh, that it watches the PID, the, the process exists. Yes. So uh, comparing that to the, the CDP's HA, which also watches the ports checks whether the processes are actually listening on the ports that they are supposed to be listening. So is that also implemented or is that something that should be implemented because it is a, when, when the process doesn't die but has a problem like a bug or a DOS or something, I mean they both could get killed and it should trigger the same action. Yeah, so currently it, it doesn't look good to see if there's anything listening on the port, but it, but it certainly could. Or we might, might actually want, in the way, it depends on how strictly you want to interpret the, the policies that Pacemaker has that say, that speak to how simple the resource agents should be. So maybe we should have, maybe we, maybe we would expand this to say there's a Ganesha, you know, Ganesha PIDMON and a Ganesha PORTMON maybe, and have two different ways to, or maybe it's okay to have both in a single resource agent. The, some of the Either, either one or both, yeah. Okay, so far so good. How am I doing on time, by the way? Especially if I'm doing okay. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was just um, deleting the Ganesha grace, which put it in, which put Ganesha, sorry, which made the grace demons send a grace signal over Dbus. And once that's finished, after a short delay, then we go ahead and delete the other attribute, which is the Ganesha active. And this is when all the really fancy magic and the part you've been waiting for. Yeah, Sham. Don't you need to move to VIP first? I mean, how do the clients that are connected to VIP one connect and get the logs replayed if the VIP moves after this? Well, OK. Yeah. Grace is still there. Well, so so the grace the grace resource died when the grace resource or exited didn't die. It it exited as a part of its standard. The the grace the surviving grace demon sent the grace message that basically tells the uh, the clients to get ready to start replaying their locks. So for the moment, for a short period of time, clients that are mounted here won't be able to do anything because their, their server has gone away. Then, then, we, then we take away the, um, the active, 
this, this triggers the VIP to fail over to another node. Once, once the client, so um, let me come, actually come back and answer this a little better here as I explain this side. So, the, as I said at the beginning, the VIPs want to live where there's a grace, where there's a Ganesha active attribute. So the Ganesha active attribute went away. Pacemaker looked at all the resource constraints, sorry, the location constraints, and figured out where we want the VIP to go next after here. So it, Pacemaker moves this resource, moves the VIP resource over to node three. Now the client, so the client is still connected to the IP address. The, even though the IP address moved, but the IP address still exists, it's just now somewhere else in the cluster. And now that the clients can actually talk to a server again, this is when they, you know, the, whatever retry logic NFS clients have to start doing the things they do, resume I.O., replay their lot. Well, sorry, they can't resume I.O. because we're still in grace, and we're going to be in grace for 90 seconds. But we have this long, long window of time when they can replay their locks and do the other things they want to do. Following me so far? Good. Everybody says yes. Um, so that's that's the real that's the that's the voodoo magic I was talking about. Not not really so voodoo. I didn't have to kill any chickens in the process. No chickens were harmed and like failing over. You did have to like jingle some keys and rattle some bones, but um, so uh, the server things have failed over. You're running in a, in a degraded state, as you can see from this sort of simplistic model. We went from each of these servers sharing 25% of the load. We'll just assume that it's really 25%. Probably in reality it's not, but we've gone to now, um, this one still has 25% of the load, this one still has 25%, but this one now has, logically anyway, 50% of the load. And, uh, and, this, and we consider this to be a semi-degraded state of operation. So one of the things you can do, or what our model is, we don't try, we have no logic to try and restart Ganesha here. We don't use systemd, we don't have any systemd uh, service files, nothing set up to try and actively or proactively try and restart Ganesha. We actually require the administrator to um, manually come in and determine, determine if it's safe to restart the Ganesha daemon and then they can, and if they choose to, then they can start the, then they can start, restart, um, restart it manually. And then, pretty much the reverse of what I just talked about, <coughs> gets replayed in, in the reverse order, and Ganesha Mon would notice that Ganesha is back, so it would recreate the, the Ganesha active and Ganesha grace attributes, and as a result of all that, the VIP will actually uh, fail back or, or migrate back to the node to the node that it prefers based on those location constraints that I talked about earlier. Um, so yeah so that's um, so from and then um, we also have support in the Ganesha script to do things like add, nodes to the cluster and subtract nodes from the cluster and they do things like uh, if you add a node it will actually tear down all the location constraints and uh, and then re recalculate all the location constraints to take into consideration the fact that we now have one more or one fewer nodes in the cluster and recompute all the location location constraints accordingly and then reinstantiate them all um, so that that's all there. Yeah, well, Jeff. If two out of four nodes in this example were to fail, how would the load be distributed? 
Well, would you end up 75-25, or would you end up 50-50 across the two? Well, it, so it depends on how the, depends on which nodes fail. So you could, you know, if, if this and this node <coughs> fails, then this VIP goes here, and, or sorry, if this is one, two, three, and four, so if one and three fail, then one's going to move here, VIP one is going to move here, and VIP three is going to move here. So then we end up with 50-50. But you, there are pathological, pathologically bad situations where, yeah, if, if, if both one and two fail, they're going to progress or they're going to fail naturally according to the calculation all on the node three, and then you end up with 75-25. Now that, that's a good that's a good comment or a good question because one of the things we'd like to do, although it, this is one of those engineering trade-offs, is we could have more VI, more of the floating or virtual IPs, so that if the, let's say we had three three virtual IPs on this, we had 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Let's say we could uh, if this fails. If this node fails, we would migrate or fail over the VIPs, one to here, one to here, one to here. We haven't done that yet. That's that's on the roadmap to do um, in the future. Uh, speaking and speaking of future, um, one of the things we need to do, we have um, the work done by Jose uh, the, in, a, in a project in a Git repo called Starhog. Storhaug is, is actually, Storhaug is a town in Norway, southern Norway, I think. I think if I make a name here, that the, the actually came up name as two words, Storhaug means big pile. <laughs> big pile? Big pile. Big pile? Uh, nice. Big pile of the transfers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's almost as good as Dublin being Celtic for Black Pool or something. Anyway, big pile, okay. <laughs> it, it works on multiple levels. I'd rather I'd rather take the trip to Norway. So the, yeah. Starhaug is very actually derived from the work that we already did. One of the things that's different is that instead of having the tight coupling with Gluster and Gluster D, we're going to start unwinding some of that that coupling, and the, the administrator will. Um, we'll start Ganesha and uh, Sava, uh, or, or they'll run the setup script manually, or, or through some other mechanism, but it won't be tightly coupled with Gluster and Gluster D, um, because the philosophically, you know, probably shouldn't be, shouldn't have been so tightly coupled. But um, and the, so the other one, the other part of that, which I just alluded to, is that. Um, we're we're adding we're adding support for Samba into that mix to the Storehog um, code. The Storehog is responsible for managing the uh, the Samba daemon as well, not not just Ganesha. So uh, the other and the other thing we need to do um, technically, Pacemaker does not support clusters that don't have fencing. We don't have any any uh, uh, any fencing support at all. Nothing in the does fencing, so we have to do we have to do something to, to really make it supported. So far, the pacemaker guys have been very friendly and very supportive, and have helped us um, helped us with some of our issues. But I think the day will come when um, when they're going to say, "Well, you don't have fencing, we can't help." I've already, I've already seen that. They've already, 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 they already, already had users in the IRC channel with been uh, irate with them for. Uh, um, Reporting them to have fencing before they even talk to them. Yeah. That that yeah. So I you know I have some leverage that maybe people, random people are are not you know not so random because you're hardly a random guy. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So we've got to yeah we got to do something about that. And uh, even Storehouse doesn't have fencing in it, so we have to have to address that as we as we migrate more and more to Storehouse. And um, a couple couple resources you can look at. 
just, uh, yeah. And if anybody didn't, didn't make the connection already, there is actually a connection between the title and the cars and the quotes at the bottom of all the pages, and there will be a, a suitable prize like something like my undying admiration for the rest of your life. <laughs> I thought they if were you all can... cars you'd own. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to own a 56 or 57 porthole cheaper. Yeah, I'd love to. No. I think the, the connection is Ford. Ford? Harrison or the cars? Yeah. Harrison, Harrison Ford is the connection, yeah. And George Lucas. Very good. No, you could, no. I already admired you. So. <laughs> okay, that's it. Any questions? I'm, so somebody gave me, somebody in Bangalore, I won't name names, but his initials were Sam, gave me a head cold and my, one of my ears is still plugged up from the landing. So I'll turn this way. It doesn't mean anything other than I want to hear your question if you have a question. You know, no questions? It was all perfectly clear. I did such a great job that nobody has any questions. I don't believe it. They no. only ask the question to this. They ask on the way. Apparently, they've already asked questions. Oh, OK. okay. Yeah, I, I got a question. So the configuration of the IPs, the VIPs with the weights and so on for the notes seems to be a little elaborate. Um, so that's, that's due to the, the way the pacemaker resource agent for these IP works, right? Well, it's... Or, and so I have to verify how, how this is done in the startup before they manage to do it in a little more simple. For instance, I mean, I, sorry that I keep repeating it from coming from the HA solution. We're currently using Samba with CTB, the HA parts there. You just specify a pool of addresses and say, okay, which algorithm do you use this week? So we usually it would be like, have two out of four not running, we always have a 50-50 distribution. Yep. And you don't need to bother with weights and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, so that, that would be a good configuration, I think. It would be easy, not overloading the admin with configuration. Well, so if you just if you just have two nodes, then yeah, it's trivial, right? But um, if we get into a situation where we have a hundred or, or a thousand nodes, not, not that we're likely to actually because um, pacemaker actually so pacemaker I think current in the current implementation supports a maximum of 16 nodes until you start using pacemaker remote remote or or and satellite I always forget the name pacemaker remote, remote cluster, I, think. I think remote cluster yeah I don't know. But anyway but basic pacemaker only allows 16 nodes and I think the next release they, they're going to bump it to 32 nodes so so we don't, we don't have to deal with thousands of nodes or even hundreds of nodes, but even at 32 nodes, we, we did not want to have uh, rely on pure luck that as Pacemaker randomly chose where to fail a floating IP address to. So our, our solution was basically designed to give us a deterministic order that floating IPs will fail over in the, in the cluster. It, so it, and it probably could be simpler. But it's and due to the way Pacemaker basically works? It's a combination of okay. yeah, how Pacemaker works and how constraint locations, constraint locations allow you to set, have, have weights, relative weights. And 